Hey guys, Jack here. I'm here to tell you that Kiri Engine version 2.10 is now available to be updated on your App Store and Google Play Store. Well, there's so many great features in the new version 2.10, but one of the most highlighted one is definitely going to be the real-time photogrammetry that's running locally on your iPhone Pro models. It is powered by the updated Object Capture API framework in iOS 17. This is kind of huge for 3D scanner companies like us. And in this video, we're going to first go over some history of the Object Capture API, and then we'll do some live demo on how you can use it in the Kiri Engine app, and later we will actually compare how the Object Capture API does versus other photogrammetry and Nerf features in the Kiri Engine app. It's gonna be fun. And actually, Object Capture API isn't even something new. It's a photogrammetry algorithm that Apple introduced three years ago in WWDC 2021. And it wasn't even that popular in the past three years because there's really nothing special comparing to the traditional photogrammetry algorithm. It has the same issue with scanning shiny, transparent, or simple color objects. And the Object Capture API only ran on Apple M chips back then, which greatly limited the use cases of the Object Capture API. And if you want to know more about the limitations of photogrammetry and the newly emerged technology called NERF in Kiri Engine, I've made this video to tell you everything you need to know. And back to the topic. Because of the launch of the new iOS 17, Everything about the Object Capture API has kind of changed. And honestly, we didn't really see it coming this way. Because now on the iOS 17, the Object Capture API runs locally on the iPhone Pro models. And it only takes several minutes to process and to give you a photoreal 3D model in great quality. And I'm very happy to say that Kiri Engine app is one of the first apps to provide the Object Capture API experience to your iPhone Pro models completely for free. And to have the feature installed in the Kiri Engine app, make sure you have an iPhone Pro model and it's updated to the newest iOS 17. Also, of course, the most updated Kiri Engine app on your phone as well. Then you will find the Object Capture option under the newly added Scan with LiDAR section. Yes, that means besides the Object Capture API function, we now support LiDAR scans in your iPhone Pro models. Well, I really, really like the user feedback mechanism of the Object Capture API. This is something that only Apple could achieve, so bravo Apple again. All you need to do is to fill in the circle while walking around an object. Then do two more sides, so the Object Capture API can capture the entire object from all angles. Oh man, I just want to take my time and appreciate all these animations and details. It's just freaking awesome. Once all three sides are done, it will take some minutes to process. But what's really changed the game here is that everything is running locally on your iPhone. No cloud, no server, or whatsoever. You know, one year ago, this was unimaginable. Even with the most powerful PC, it would take like 15 minutes to run photogrammetry. And the result is not so bad. The texture is pretty good as well. But one thing to note here is that we were kind of rushing to make the Object Capture API available to you, so we didn't really have the time to give you all the good stuff that Kiri Engine has. For example, right now, the 3D scans from the Object Capture API can only be exported as the USDZ format, and no PBR, no quad mesh yet. But over the time, we sure will add more stuff to it to make it meet the Kiri Engine standard. All right, obviously, I didn't really cover everything about the Object Capture API. I'll leave the rest for you to discover. But now, I want to talk about the techniques behind the Object Capture API that made all these amazing stuff happen. There are two secret weapons. 
One is that the Object Capture API is structured around Apple Silicon's neural engine. Being able to optimize the performance for one specific chip made it much, much more efficient to run. And two, I'm pretty sure the LiDAR is involved in the process. During scanning, you can see the real-time point cloud generation. This is definitely LiDAR's work. Also, I suspect LiDAR is used for photo alignments, or aka camera pose calculation. Normally, camera pose calculation is one of the most computing intense process. But did you see how fast it does the photo alignment in the app? It's unbelievable. All right, here comes the fun part of the video. Because the new Object Capture API is also based on photogrammetry, right? So I'm curious to know how it compares to the traditional photogrammetry that's available in the Curie Engine app as take photos and upload from local photo options. I think, I think the Object Capture API could be better because it uses LiDAR data but I'm not entirely sure because just considering how fast it does in your phone, I mean, it gotta have some sacrifice, right? But let's find it out. All right, let's start from something really simple here. We're gonna scan this stone because we know the stones, stones has a lot of features on the surface and it's like ideal for photogrammetry. And yeah, this go something easy with, with, uh, with the reality capture first. Sorry, object capture. And capture is like one of the companies um, from Epic Games. So something about them. It's object capture. There you go. Um, yeah, so click on scan with LiDAR and then choose the object capture function. And there you go. You will enter this beautiful interface. And yeah, it just automatically detects the boundaries of the object you want to scan, and we're gonna start capturing here. And then we'll immediately see this beautiful kind of point cloud generated. Okay, but I just love the feedback. It's definitely much better than Curie Engine, honestly. But it's Apple, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so we finished the first segment and let's move on to the second one. So basically, uh, recommend us to flip the object and do the second scan. There you go. Continue. All right. Um, it doesn't really do the boundary that much, so let's manually adjust it. There you go. Continue. Cool. All right, just keep spinning. Um, now because we have the room to walk around an object, but Apple says that if you don't have the room to walk around, uh, you can also use a turntable, right? But it just, just goes something easy on this. Oh, there you go. Okay, uh, third segment. So flip it again, and there you go. Cool. Continue. All right, everything's finished. You can just start the process. This is the part I really like because everything you see is like running locally on your iPhone Pro. All right, it's almost done. There you go. Uh, let's see how it looks. How nice. You can check out the detail of stone. It looks pretty good in Curie Engine. All right, so use the actual traditional uh, photogrammetry. Um, let's do it. So take photos, allow cameras. Cool, I just love how you do a uh, new user guidance. That's awesome. All right, so yeah, so same thing. We're gonna take photos circling around an object and we're gonna do um, three segments just the way we did on the other capture API. All right, now I've got the exactly the same procedural done with the um, traditional photogrammetry in Curie Engine. And remember to turn on the AI object masking, guys, because we moved the object during the scanning, so we have to turn it on. Okay, um, everything can just leave it as is, but maybe I'll choose the task to nature and plans, and let's upload it.
All right, so we've got a second stone generated that's from the traditional photogrammetry from Kiwi Engine, and I put them side by side uh, in Blender. All right, and by the look of these two 3D models, they look super similar. I mean, that's a, that's a really good job on the Object Capture API, just considering how much is done in your local and how fast it does the job. And uh, yeah, so one thing to note is, well, of course, um, the, this one is from the Object Capture API, right? And uh, if you uh, examine the surface, well, the level of details on the mesh, uh, you can notably realize um, the mesh from the Object Capture API is smoothier. Well, it's more smooth than the uh, the one that's generated from the Curie Engine. Um, and if you turn on the texture, you can kind of see that um, the one from Object Capture API is not as sharp as how we got from Curie Engine, the traditional photogrammetry. Right? Um, yeah, so, and if you look at the level of point clouds, um, the one from the Object Capture API, it only gives you 25,000 faces. And versus the one that's generated by Kiri Engine, uh, for this one, it gives you, that little thing over here, it gives you like 174,000 faces, which is like, which is significantly more than the one uh, from Object Capture API, right? And yeah, so now you know what uses, use cases you may use for either of those. Uh, for Object Capture API, it's more like you don't really, um, you know, need the level of details and the number of faces to be too much. Then you can just grab your phone from pocket, even if you don't have the internet connection, that's okay. You just do your job and uh, process it and get the 3D assets in like a couple minutes. But if you ca in case, if you do need a professional level, high quality, uh, dense, high poly 3D model, um, we still recommend you to use the cloud. It's your choice.